Welcome back to Six Pack Cinema. Today we are discussing The Old Man and the Gun, the movie about real life bank robber Forrest Tucker, played by Robert Redford, Casey Affleck, Tom Waits, Shelly, I don't know, Sasek, is that how you pronounce your last name? Sasek, Sasek, uh, Donald Glover? Yes, Spacek, Sasek. Donald yeah. Glover? Danny Glover, Donald Glover's Childish Gambino. Anyway, that's yeah. the movie we're talking about. Let's get into it. Dude, you should review movies. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god. Okay, I've okay. had a couple, so. Uh, movie review. All right, thank you guys for joining. If you just watched The Old Man and the Gun and you're searching your podcast app and you found ours, thank you very much for clicking. We're happy you're with us if you're a longtime listener and have come back to hear more of our opinions and discussions on movies. Thank you for joining as well. Today we're doing Old Man and the Gun. As you know, the way this podcast works is we're going to do our gut reaction. We're going to walk through some of our favorite parts, some of our least favorite parts, then we're going to give our ratings, a two-part rating. One, a fun rating. Popcorns out of five. The next is a 10 times 10 rating, 100. 100. Critical. Yeah. yeah, 100. My name's Jimmy, and I got my co-host, John. Dave, our usual third piece, is not here because he couldn't see the movie. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Because... Would... Is it unfortunate? Yeah. Okay, let's go. That brings us right into gut. Gut. Reaction. John, is it unfortunate that Dave couldn't see this movie? Yeah, and I kind of caught off guard. I thought we were both going to be on, on board here. Uh, yeah, it's, I thought it was a great movie. It was a nice, pleasant one to sit through. Robert Redford's amazing. It's just one of those old-timey, like, just you sit there cozy and casual and just take it all in. It was, it was amazing. Cozy is the right word. This was definitely a happy, cozy, smiley movie. But... I, I don't. I didn't love it. I thought it was good, not great, is what I would say. Interesting. Um, wow. I, what it what? what it did well, it did really well. But I thought it was missing a lot. I thought it was missing a lot that I wanted. Well, it was a simple movie. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't flashy. It was just I don't know, simple. It was very clear cut. It was. It was about a bank robber who loved robbing banks. Did you loved ever get in get, trouble? Did you ever get invested into any? character or scene of with suspense or fear or heartbreak yeah, yeah I, it was kind of like a cat and mouse where the, it, with with robert redford it's whether he wanted to stay in or out and he he knew he liked this girl and he wanted to be with her but he also really couldn't get away from from crime he loved crime more than anything else in the world i mean there was there was these, these little like snippets of things where he looks over at a couple at a bank Doing like doing these, you know, adult things, you know, this boring shit, and he's like, "Well, like, yeah, maybe I could do that." You get distracted by it. It's something that like usually happens when a guy turns like 30, 35. It just happened to him when he was seventy. I think Robert Redford's amazing. There's there's a long list of things this movie does really well, and Robert Redford's acting is one of them. I think it's actually one note, but the one note is fantastic because it's so pleasant. Okay. And his right. his voice when he opens up and talks, his voice is just pulls you in. Like, oh, it's just I mean, he's the most likable man on earth. Yeah, the way he's like, I can't tell you that's a secret. <laughs> I gotta show you that, that that whole conversation. Their chemistry was really good too. Yes, on screen, which I, I love that. Um, I thought it was interesting, like how how I mean, Robert Redford. He's he's won two Academy Awards for Best Actor, I believe. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and then opposite him was Casey Affleck, who. We all know is an Academy Award winner for the most depressing movie ever, and I thought it was interesting the juxtaposition that the word between those two because Robert Redford you loved instantly and it, it you could tell he was a world class actor, whereas Casey Affleck it's like well so he's a one trick pony and he just could only play a depressing guy. It that this could have been a sequel to his same character from Manchester by the Sea. Casey Affleck After he, plays that like sullen voice. How does he make his voice sound like that? Well, he gets a little whiny, and then he just doesn't, you know. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll figure it out. Maybe he won't, but you know. Yeah, he does the we'll same. See how it goes. He does the same thing in Gone Baby Gone, mm -hmm. and I, I like that performance though. 
So. No, it's a it's it's a good performance. It's it's great, but I, I always think back to when I was in high school. I took a drama class, and we had to do a uh, a monologue, and I I just chose the the opening monologue from Patton. You know that one? No, no, you don't. You've no. never seen Patton. No. It's wonderful. All right, it's basically he's talking to his troops, rallying them up to go into war, and I recited it, and I was up there scared shitless. It was my first time public speaking, and the whole class was staring at me, and I was really slow and like kept looking down and they all clapped and applauded They're like oh my god john that was amazing really sold how how thoughtful and caring you were about the, for the character and i'm like well no i was just scared shit scared was very nervous <laughs> that's that's what i think of now with casey affleck every time he acts it's like he's nervous to be up there and he doesn't know how to act so he just kind of cowers i know it's not true but that's just the impression i get interesting i thought the best scene in the movie was the first bank robbery when Casey Affleck's telling the knickknack knack Paddywhack give the frog a loan <laughs> story. Just how it played out. Like, oh, there's a cop here. He's telling the, telling the story. I thought that was really well done. We're really well directed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to lay out all the positives first because I don't want to start with the things I didn't like and then sound like, you know, I didn't like the movie because the performances were good. The, They're great. The cinematography was outstanding. You get depth. I, I got I got one complaint about the cinematography though. What's that? They filmed it on fifteen on they filmed it on sixteen millimeter, mm-hmm. like the old time. That I didn't know that going in, and I've had I'm kind of got my old contacts in. Like I I thought I was like losing my eyesight because <laughs> it was grainy. Yeah, it was like fuzzy and shit. Especially when they when they were like reading the letters, I was like, well, usually this is more clear. Am my eyes like really going? Yeah, that, yeah. I th- I think it worked well. The shot of the first bank was so cool when he walked out. It's that old school bank, mm. a very 80s feel to it. You know, that yep. was, I thought the tone was perfect. Uh, the cinema, cinematography was really good. The acting was really good. The whole tone, was it was the same throughout. Yep. I thought it was really one note, and the one note was happy and genuine. Which is not a bad note. But I never felt tense. And maybe tense is even too strong. I never felt worried or suspense it's a bank robbing movie when him and casey affleck meet in that hallway i was amped up i sat up in my seat like oh what this is cool and then it was kind of like cool scene it was like forest yeah. closer than you think I don't know. but that, that was a great scene but i i don't think it was a bank robber movie i think it was a movie about an old man trying to figure himself out it was an old, it was an old, uh, old convict movie. I think they and need- he, he wants he wants the good life and he just can't have it. Um, so I also think they needed to vilify him a little more. Like uh, there was never a point where he realized like, oh, I'm actually ruining like people's lives. Like I'm giving people the worst day of their life. Doesn't matter how nice I am to them. Like this well- bank teller's crying, and this is probably the only time she ever had a gun in front of her. And if someone asked her in twenty years, what's the worst day of your life? Probably when I got robbed at gunpoint in a bank, and they never made him realize he was a bad guy. Well, I mean that that one girl was the first day, yeah, and she starts crying. But he's like, "Why? Why are you crying? It's not it's basically it's like, not your money. You're just it's like, well, it's my first day." And he walked. He's like, "You know what? You're doing a great doing job." Right. It was funny, but it was I wanted him to, and, and it was genuine. <laughs> yeah, was, but I wanted him to have realize like he's a bad guy when. He was making the when he was doing his getaway and making the girl drive the car and her kids in the back seat. Like, dude, you're a terrible guy. Well, he didn't realize the guy, the kid was in the back seat. I know that's why. But they did a little bit where he realized, but they didn't do a lot. In the end, he called up the cop and was like, "I'm going back to being a bank robber." And it's like, "You're ba- he's a career criminal. He's been in jail yeah. from 16 to 70. He's been in jail. Like, and they never, they never." let him be a bad guy for the audience like they needed to vilify him a little bit otherwise it was kind of cartoony to me well i mean you gotta understand there were they handcuffed a little bit because it is a true story you know Mm -hmm. and he's he was the 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 one thing everyone said about him was a gentleman he's a very kind guy so he was i think he was going about things the best way he could he's just looking for a little excitement and uh sort of he upset people here and there but i don't think it ruined I mean, if it ruined anything, maybe their afternoon, but it was nothing was like lasting. He never, she never hurt anybody physically. Yeah, he scarred him mentally though. Yeah, you know. abandoned his daughter. Well, I don't. She like she said, I don't know if if he even knows I exist. Yeah, and I don't think he did. That, so that that didn't sit well with me. And then I thought they really underutilized Danny Glover and Tom Waits. 
those characters had nothing to them. Tom, wait, what? What has he been in, by the way? I don't even. Do I, should I know him? He's a singer. He oh, he really? he wrote Jersey Girl, that's made famous by um, Bruce Springsteen. But no shit. I don't think he's really an actor. Uh, you should know that uh, people think that. Oh, uh, people think that Heath Ledger stole Tom Waits did was doing a Tom Waits impression when he was doing the Joker. Interesting, but, uh, but I can I can see that a little bit. There's this one interview he, he does where it's like spot on. He was a weird guy, he, and it, he was he was a weird character. He is a weird guy. He's not really an actor. No, and you could tell. But I I thought they didn't flush those guys out like a lot at all. I I. I don't know this is kind of weird, but I kind of got the feeling that Danny Glover and Tom Waits were a little bit more than just friends because they would bicker by like like they were in a relationship. I just think that's how old people operate. I don't I know, but then they that when they uh they drove up to the the big heist and they're saying how was your trip and they're like romantic. He he didn't like my book on tape. Just kind of <laughs> That's funny. It was. So and also when 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 Tom Waits is repairing Danny Glover when he got shot, it was a little hint of things like, well, I uh, you know, tell you I never did finish medical school it's like well no shit man we know you you're a very dumb person you didn't go to medical school it's, it was just funny he had a great sense of humor yeah they were kind but of I don't, relief but like, i don't know i feel like they could have brought more to the table and also i love 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 the fact when he was and also this another point too when he walks out of, of robert Riffitt's house and he's like well hey man we mean to ask you why do you live across the street from a uh, a graveyard and there's no reason to her you know but then he turns around and says hey you should lay low for a couple of days. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. My last thing that I thought was, was bad, and this is the biggest one. What? The ending happened three times. It was hodgepodge at the ending. The ending happened three times. There was three endings. Blues run the game, and the, and the car scene home was fantastic. Take a boat to London, baby. That's on. Mm-hmm. During the car yep. scene. And I thought that was going to be the final scene. But then he shows up at her door. It's locked. He gets arrested. Yep. Then he goes to jail. And now they throw like a million flashbacks at us. That felt so hodgepodgey and like not in good order. Like, oh, let's just throw all these at the end here. Um, I have a theory on that, but I'll let you go through. What's your, what's your last one? And then he gets out. She's like, stay in prison. And I thought that was it. And then he gets out and robs a bank again. And I'm like. Well, I mean, because you could tell he was trying to be straight. He listened to her. She says, stay in here this time. And he's like, all right, I'll give it a shot. He stayed in. He served his time. He gets out. He's very frustrated. But he's just not a happy person. And he just can't do it. Yeah. I just thought the ending was like a fine. It was like a bit of a finding Nemo. Like uh, this movie just ended twice. And now it's ending a third time. I can see that. They probably could. Could have picked a better way to do it. Um, my theory about the the montage. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I can't say for sure, but I'm. I'm pretty sure half of those scenes were old Robert Redford movies. Maybe, and that's just. Uh, I think. I think it was kind of like a, like a, a hat tip to Robert Redford's career. It could have been, but that goes with my theory that they felt kind of shoehorned in. Like if they gave us that background at the beginning of the movie or throughout, it would have mm-hmm. been a little better than. Uh, these are all the times I escaped prison. I knew that he escaped prison a ton because I, I looked into the story a little bit before I went. Yep. But if you didn't know that at all, I feel like that's a big time drop on you. Oh, this guy's a career criminal. Well, I mean, you, you got to assume a guy who's that good at robbing banks at 75 years old is going to be a career criminal. It's not it's a hobby you pick up. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe I was just right in the right state of mind for it because, I, like I said, I was just happy. I thought that was really enjoyable and nice, pleasant movie. I was like, oh, this is great. Oh, a little montage with the uh, old Robert Redford. Oh, that's just that's just nice. I, I agree like with that. all. I agree with all of that. It was a happy, genuine, like cozy movie. I mean, you were looking for more uh, conflict. You were looking for looking for more uh, conflict. That's a great term for a career yeah. bank robber who's escaping jail and evading the police and. Like has a new love interest. I, there was zero conflict, and the movie. See, now you were, you were looking for real conflict, like real, like action, not action conflict, but like physical conflict. What really it was was mental conflict. No, but I was looking for. I just never felt suspense or or worry or. I don't think you were supposed to feel worry or suspense. I think you just like kind of observe this man 
go back and forth. Like he just can't, he he wants to get out, but he just can't. Yeah, he wa- he wants to treat this girl to a nice ne- nice breast bracelet and treat her to like some little jewelry, Buy and then he land. can't help himself. But no, then he he can't help himself and he steals the the bracelet. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, 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 fuck you, man. That's exciting, but we're seventy five years old and this is not what people do. Oh, how egregious was it when the he, the first bank he robs when Casey Affleck's there with him and the guy's like he was fifty years old, maybe sixty. Like, no, he said 40, maybe 50. Yeah, 40, maybe 50. Dude, what are you looking at? I, I, I gasped when he said that. What are you looking at? No. Uh, and and to be honest, at, at that time, actually, be, yeah, at that time, I wasn't even sure this was a period piece. I thought maybe it was just like showing how old this guy is with this fucking like transistor radio. Mm-hmm. Until until I see them come up with like the old police cars. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, this is this is period. Yeah. All right. But no, that that whole that whole bank scene with him, with Casey, it was. If that that was tension, just figuring out like yeah, he was very he was in there robbing a bank with with a cop, the cop was distracted. The guy like tells people to press the button. And it was like that's tension. Man. That was a really good scene. But later on, I didn't feel much. So you you felt you were, you to set the tone for for tension and and goodness, great scene, and you felt it never really matched up to that. I was expecting like a heist movie or a cat and mouse movie. And it's like you said, it was just kind of the story of a guy and they didn't play up any of those other aspects. Yeah, no, they, they made a point not to like the big heist. They didn't show a damn bit of it. Yeah. And they, they like the love life still. They, did, they didn't really play that out. Nope. It was all mental with this guy going back and forth. Just, he loves crime. It was just like making a career criminal who ruined people's lives and days all the time. A nice guy. Ruins their day, not their lives. No one was affected dramatically from this. I think some people were. Maybe, maybe the boy in the backseat. Maybe. And his mom. She'll get over it. The lady on her first day probably quit being a teller. She's like, I oh, he told her she was doing a great job. Can't do this. I, I'm, I'm playing that up. I, but I, no, I know, you, I know you are, but I I'm do, defending it to the end. I do think there's a little bit of that where I wanted him to realize he, was, he thought he was so charming and like, well, he's so nice. He's so nice. I wanted him to realize, well, he actually is like damaging people. Well, maybe he did at the end. He's like, you know what? I'm not meant for this world, and I need to go. I'm going to call a cop, tell him what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go back to jail because I don't belong out here. Oh, I like that. Bam. I like Solved that. the movie for you. All right. Do you want to rate it? I do want to bring up one more point. Uh, I want to oh, I had another scene, this. too, but you go first. My point first. Uh, the title of the movie, The Old Man and the Gun. He's never, he's never shown holding the gun. Yeah, it's never shown if he even like has it. No, he, he's got it. It's in the glove compartment. Yeah, but that, and, and also that's it, not in it the clicks. Bank. No, it clicks in the bank. Oh, okay. Um, that was the name of the magazine article that was written about oh, really? the real guy, and they bought the rights to the story through that magazine article. Okay. Uh, but I think it's a good name. Like, no, I, I love it. I, I think, I think it's it, the old man and the gun. Meaning, like, there's an old man and he's got a gun, and he never once used it. He didn't have to. Yeah. He's he's more dangerous than the gun without it. You, th- you know. You think Hemingway gets any money for this? Hemingway? It's a play on The Old Man in the Sea. <laughs> no, of course not. He's dead. He's dead. Killed himself. No money. <laughs> no money. Sister Brothers. I want to see that. That's one of the recommended movies here, The Sister Brothers. Want, Interesting. Want to see that. Oh, yeah. you, you had one more scene? Yes. When Casey Affleck finds the other cop who tracked him down and lets him know, like, oh, that's Forrest Tucker. Um, and he tells, <laughs> like, the whole history. Like he escaped sixteen times. That I thought that actor did a great job with that delivery and yeah. the scene. That was a lawyer. Lawyer, lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that was great. I, I liked that scene a lot. So the the scenes you liked uh, were all the storytelling scenes. Yeah, it makes sense. That's who I am. Yeah, and I think it was a storytelling movie, just not a lot of action movie. Yeah. All right, let's go into ratings, and, okay. and I, I'm interested to see how far different this is going to be. Okay, because you, um, you're way higher than me on this, but I'm not. I'm not low. In, w- in one category, maybe um, popcorns right away. Entertainment factor. I'm giving it a three. I was gonna do a three as well, because it's. I thought it was wonderful. I enjoyed it, but rewatchability. I don't think I'm gonna like get excited to sit down and watch this one again. I'm glad I saw it. I'd watch. This is the. Re- I'd watch scenes. This this movie is the reason why I got into doing this podcast because there's all kinds of movies out there that I wanted to see but I never got around to, and this is something this got me to see it and I'm very happy about that. But it's not a rewatchable one. I do. I'm sure, I, shit, I'm not gonna buy a DVD. Yeah, I'd sit down and watch scenes. I'd watch like four scenes, 
and that's it. And, but I, yeah. I, I wasn't riveted any time. It was just kind of like, yeah, this is nice. Okay. No, nope, no edge of the seat action, but just pleasant and happy. Yeah. So three, three, and then bam, critical. I'm going seventy four. That's outrageously low. Okay. Um, I went with ninety. Wow. Well, I, I we were way too high, so I'm bringing down the whole scope of my my ratings. Like ninety for me means it's going to be nominated for best picture. I think he could be nominated for Best Actor. Yeah, but oh, I don't think Robert Redford's performance is anything. I think it's great. No, I'm talking about Tom Waits. <laughs> Tom Waits? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no I, I thought Robert Redford was great. I do too, but I don't think it's impressive. He's always impressed. Maybe it's just me being always impressed by him. Yeah, 74 and 90. What's that, What's that average to? 164, <laughs> 82? I don't know. Um, what? 74. 82. 82. I was right. Yeah, just beat you to it. Wow, that's a big gap. It is. That's that's probably one of the largest gaps we've had. Uh, and I stand by it. I, I'm very happy with everything. Technically, it was a great movie. Like you, you appreciated it, right? Cinematography uh, and music and all that was awesome. E- even the fuzzy frames, the, the fuzzy picture. Yeah, I like that. Because, yeah, it ma- made sense looking back at it because it was supposed to be you know in the 80s. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, just everything about it. I, I I walked out very very happy. All right, so ninety it is. The new eighty two average three popcorn. The new set. The new segment that Dave started. What do you think this got on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, I'm gonna go high. I'm gonna go like my. I'm gonna go with my score, but a little less. 80, 89. Are you talking critical or audience? Critical. Critical. Audience is an eighty nine percent. Bam. No, no, no. All right. Critical is an eighty nine percent. Okay, yeah, so I was right. Audience is, uh, is audience is lower. Sixty two. Damn, that's substantially lower. Yeah. Three point so, four out of five so I, stars I, for audience and seven point four out of ten for tomato meter. Wait, so are you just glancing on the fact that I just nailed the critic score? You did. Eighty nine. Shout out me. Nice. Would uh, would this movie have been better with Ben Affleck? No. Ah, it had an Affleck in it though. It had his brother. Well, maybe. Ah, uh, caught me off guard because I was thinking Robert Redford. But hey, yeah, you know what? Because my complaint, my big complaint is Casey Affleck is a doorknob. So Ben Affleck, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Make Ben Affleck the lawyer that I liked, who did a fantastic job. So I don't know why I'm no, getting him. No, I, I, no I, I liked him just the way he was. He was perfect. All right. Go marry him, why don't you? Maybe I will. The old man and the gun. What are you drinking with it? We still do this? What are you drinking with it? Occasionally. It was, I mean, it's... The old man stuff. I think I'm gonna go drink uh, an old fashioned. Yeah, I just got whiskey on the rocks. Well, if you throw in a, a thing of sugar and a twist of orange, it's an old fashioned. Yeah, but that makes it bad. You're smuddling up good whiskey. Well, the whole point is you get bad whiskey. Oh. And you make it make it nicer. I'm gonna get the good whiskey on the rocks. Well, that is the old man and the gun. That's the review we're at. <laughs> that's we're at. That's it. That's it. Dave, we'll see what he says afterwards. Um. I liked it. I think it's a good movie. I don't. I, I. I don't think it's a great movie. I think it's a good movie. Yeah, you. You gave it a three popcorn and seventy four percent. So you're like, this is a completely average movie. Yeah, they stand by that. I. I'm. I'm lowering my scale. I thought. I think we got way too ninety happy. If we like liked the movie at all, we were just giving it nineties. Maybe. Maybe we're we were skewing the lines of entertainment and and like popcorn and critical. Maybe. Yeah. So I, I'm 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 getting this back to reality with like 70s and 80s exist and they're good. They're okay. Yeah. But 50s terrible. Yeah. So you guys let us know what you thought of the old man and the gun with Robert Redford. Go to Instagram slash Six Pack Cinema, mm-hmm. Twitter slash Six Pack Cinema. Let us know what you think. Let us know what else you want us to review. We actually have a list in place. Tell them what we're doing next week and then a week after that and the week after that. All right, on the spot. I can still pull it up quickly, though. All right, got it right here. Um, so this is debuting uh, November 5th. Uh, November 12th, we're talking about Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, November 19th, we're talking about Netflix's Outlaw King. And then uh, the following week, uh, November 26th, we're discussing Netflix's The Battle, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Nice. It's a good little lineup. So go watch those and then come back here and subscribe and rate and review. And thank you very much for listening. We'll be back Friday with our Hollywood headlines 
everything you need to know that's going on in that weird, dumb place that is Hollywood. See you.